Uh, coming up here, we have John Blakesell, who's going to speak with us today about application development with Blazor. Uh, John's been a programmer since 1980. Uh, he currently works as the tech lead for the Environment Project and Central Office IT Department. His past experience includes working at Battelle, Northrop Grumman, John Galbraith, and AEP. Please welcome John Blakesell. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, glad you all could come. Hopefully, we have a fun uh, experience here trying to make it a little uplifting. For those of you who came, came in late, you missed the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> we did have some fun jokes. So, uh, this is Blazor. It is brand new. It's not actually going to be released, as we're saying. So, enjoy. And uh, hopefully, this is a high level introduction. So, um, we, people here are not programmers. So, trying to keep them interested a little bit too, but we will have some a little deep stuff in here for the programmers to see. Hopefully, a lot to wow you and go, "Hey, this is all right." Here we go. <laughs> I hope this is right. Which? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Front end, you're now going to use C sharp. 
But not only are you going to be using C Sharp, you're going to be using ASP.NET, Razor Pages. So everything that you knew on ASP.NET is basically going to be valid in Blazor. So this is people going, oh, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. All right, Blazor can run, and now we'll show, can run both client and server, basically using the same code. Okay, now the server has more rights. Blazor runs using what's called WebAssembly. WebAssembly is a way for, is in each of the browsers, except for IE. IE, doesn't, the old Internet Explorer doesn't have uh, WebAssembly, so you can't use it, but all the other modern browsers support WebAssembly. It compiles internally. What's that mean? Anybody remember when uh, JavaScript would run on, run on one blur, uh, browser, but not on the other one, or run differently? Under WebAssembly, that doesn't happen. So it's a major difference. Blazor apps what's, are based on components and also which are basically a page, a dialogue, an entry form, but also has a fragment. So just a little bit, so you can inject fragments in, with Blazor. Uh, it's a single page application, just like Angular. So it replaces Angular. <laughs> Different way to do it, Angular. All right. And it runs on the modern browser, as I said, not on IE. Okay. What it is not, it is not yet a replacement for JavaScript. Like I said, give it three years. Give it two or three years, and you might see it. I mean, it's really getting a lot of excitement on the internet on what it's doing. Enterprise ready, uh, obviously, we're going to have to wait till version 2.0, 2.5, 3.0 for anything to be enterprise ready. But it's, um, it's getting there. It's actually looking pretty good. The, uh, it's easy to learn if you've got an ASP.NET background, you're going to go, oh. <laughs> there's some new things to learn, there's new places to put things, but for the most part, it's kind of like ASP.NET on the front end, on the client. And we'll go over that. Okay? And again, the learn curve is bad as Angular. Question. So yeah. you say it's not easy to learn, or it, it is easy? It's easier, it's still got a learning curve. Oh. It's still got a learning curve. There are new things to learn. But it's not like Angular or some of the other frameworks. It's got a whole new paradigm. If you know ASP.NET, it's, e it's easy to learn. If it's not, if you don't know ASP.NET, then, you, you know, it becomes a little more difficult. Version 1.0, 923. That's like uh, four days. <laughs> it gets released in the 1.0. So what I'm working with is the version uh, Preview 9. Now, unit testing. One of the things that you're going to see with unit testing, and no spoiler alerts here, I'm not going to spoil anything on it, you will be impressed uh, what they're go doing. But it is not fully baked yet. And it was not expected to be baked in uh, on the 1.0 release. Um, like I think, 1.5 before it really probably gets to be so looking good. Server apps, and we'll cover that just uh, very shortly, um, are more stable than the client apps, and we'll go over the difference between the two. Uh, but you can do the same on both. Okay, how to install Blazor? I spent two days trying to install Blazor on the current stable build of um, Visual Studio 2019. You have to have the latest preview. Um, so once you do the latest preview, it's pretty darn easy. You install the uh, preview, you install the latest version of the template, which is using a .NET command, a .NET install, do, template, da da da, they give you the command when you go to install. Um, and then there's a Blazor app. So hit the Blazor app, it says do you want a client or do you want a server app? Pick the one you want. And we're definitely going on, uh, go over which ones and uh, what are the difference. Here's the major features of Blazor. You, not only do you code in C-sharp, in the client end, it will produce the C-sharp code for you to find, instead of JavaScript or something else. You actually see your C-sharp code when you debug on the client in the browser. Okay? It has full routing and dependency injection built in, 
The routing is low level, you know, just a basic routing. Right now, they're going to be adding more. Uh, asynchronous calls, this one thing kind of impressed me. A one line call to, within a way, to get your um, data from your service. Just a nice one line call. That's going to a file, we'll see. Pulling data out of file, but it's the same if you're going to a, an actual API. Um, full JavaScript interrupts, said so unit testing, dynamic components and fragments. That means you can create a component, a dynamic component, that generates the HTML on the fly. <coughs> so you can make full use of that. Validations, we'll see this using ASP.NET attributes. How many are familiar with? putting attributes on models required and all that stuff. Anybody? Okay, we've got a couple. Yep. And can be client or you can design an application depending on your needs, client only, server only, or client with uh, an API. What are the difference between a client? This is important. What kind of thing do you need? A client app loads slower because it's downloading a two megabyte base on it. So it's going to uh, load a little slower, but the calls to the server are only server calls. It doesn't do anything in between. So it's much more scalable. It uses, the WebAssembly actually uses Mono. Everybody familiar with Mono, basically? Mono's the open source version of .NET. And this is a WebAssembly compiled version of the WebAssembly uh, for uh, web is, um, a model for WebAssembly. It is sandboxed for security, just like the JavaScript apps are. And again, debugging on the client, you can actually step through the C-sharp code. And it says, client app demo. I guess that means type for client app. <laughs> All right. And let's run this. This is just the little um, app they gave you. Do it a build. I'm running straight out of the uh, 2019 preview here. Unable. Oh, that's great. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You're bleeding edge right now. You're bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, that's a little app 
There are, if you look online, there are pizza store apps that people have done with it and everything else. So there's some major apps. I just don't feel right now that it's the time to, um, it's ready yet to really put any time or effort into it. But let's go over what a client, this is a client side. Now, if I bring up the server side, you get the same app. It's the same app. It's just different code. So, but let's bring up the code so we can see code. <laughs> Those of you who have used ASP.NET, this is the startup file for the client. Anybody here that knows ASP.NET Core, look at that and go, oh. <laughs> that is configure services, configure, add the app, starts it. But you can add services, you can inject. This is the client side, not the server side. Anybody kind of like one? Oh, <laughs> this is the uh, the hosting that gets started. It's the main create the host builder. This is because this is client imports. You have an imports file at using. Let's go to pages. Some of the pages we saw that little counter razor file. Okay, page counter, that's our, there you go, thanks. That's our, well, that tells us where to go. Page one counter, heading, current, oh, what's this? At current, that's a variable, current count. That's just a binding, a one-way binding. On click, you click the button, it's called an increment count. What's increment count? This method. This, in this code, see add code? That's your C sharp. That's your C sharp code. That's all it. You can put it in the background. By the way, if you create and inherit a base page for this, the C sharp code can go in the base page. So you don't even have it on the front screen, so you segment your code. But that's just a, a very simple thing done here, increment count. We're going to be unit, remember this, memorize this, because we're going to be unit testing it. <laughs> All right. So we have the fetch data page, which I showed you a little bit. This thing doesn't. Yeah. So again, the front part, our top part, our table, our references. Here's the actual data. Control D. You actually put it in there. Huh? Onto your grid. Control D. Undo. Just on your keyboard, hit <laughs> Control C. Because you added a you added a tag. Well, I added. Oh. Yeah, see right there into the grid. Control D. Control D. Oh. Just delete line 20. Huh? Just delete line 20. Oh. Just delete that? Yeah, just press delete right now. Uh -oh. Hit on 20. Hit 20. Yeah. Hit 20, now delete. Delete. Man! Okay, yeah. We're back now. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Ben to the rescue. All right. Again, up top, our HTML. Emphasize on loading. Our table. For each there. You notice that's a four, a regular four-inch loop there. <coughs> the four test. That's looping through regular four-inch, and that's the data coming in. That's the regular uh, ASP.NET stuff. I mean, so down here our at code, and here again is our call to the, get our data. That's it. One line call. We put it in the weather forecast class. There it is. And even here we have a computation for the conversion of centigrade to Fahrenheit. All regular ASP.NET stuff. If you know ASP.NET, this is pretty easy stuff. Index, the front page. That's the front page. See, it's already prompt title. That's the title. Passing the title in. Um, what can I say? It's easy. <laughs> For this part, when you do a little bit. Obviously, when you get into more complex projects, 
it gets harder, obviously, and everything does. Can you interact with the DOM? Huh? Can you interact with the DOM? It's got its own, um, it actually kind of shadows the DOM or whatever. But yes, you can, uh, in terms of that, in terms of the actual DOM, it kind of shadows it. But um, with Java Interop, you can interact, interact both ways with JavaScript calling uh, the Blazor back and forth. So you can do that. And actually, I would kind of recommend that you JavaScript use TypeScript. It can work. <coughs> just to keep it, so it kind of looks more like C Sharp anyway. But that, that's my personal preference. But that gives you a little look, I mean, of uh, Blazor in that sense. So let's go over to server side. What's the difference? The server side, everything is done on the server. You are using the full .NET Core. What happens is, and this is what's amazing, is that Signal R is used to pass the HTML and stuff down to the client and run it. You can actually run on a thin client. So this is from the server side. But, as with everything, there's drawbacks. So, what are the drawbacks? Well, every interaction, again, results in a callback. But what they've done is it's, it's, it's binary, they take the difference, and they only send down the difference. They're not refreshing the whole page. So it still operates quickly, depending on what you're doing. But that's a consideration. The, um, well, I said, uses .NET Core instead of Mono, which means you have uh, you don't have the sandboxing because you're on the server. You have more features because .NET Core has more features on the 3.0. Um, it is not as scalable. Why? Because that server has to handle all connections and every interaction also that every user is doing, you've got to deal with that. But debugging is a joy. It's a regular C Sharp debugging. I mean, if Compared to JavaScript, yeah. <laughs> C-sharp there. So let's cover, now that we got it working, let's cover the uh, server side. And again, let's do, we got a Blazor server demo. Basically, if you look at the, um, that's a little static data they did on the server side. But let's go, here's the main menu, well let's run this thing. Everybody want to run it and just see that it's absolutely the same? Sure. Let's do that. Let's do that. Hey, let's go for it. Let's go. So now one of the things too is because it's not downloading the mono and just up, the startup of it is faster. So, what the? <laughs> I don't know who put me in it, but that's not right. <laughs> Eugene and I know what you went through. <laughs> well, what the heck? This thing is not right. All right, let's start it out, turn it back over here. We are in IT. What do you think of this? I can't believe you version of this. It could be the preview too. Uh, oh, there's a new preview, preview four out. The uh, the call to the uh, 
service, a little different because now it's on the, on the end. But other than that, it's basically the same. But let's go, one big difference, the start up. See, now we have a full .NET Core startup here with the configuration, adding the pages, adding a single thing. Let me give you one of the things. Because a server, if you put a service in as a singleton, for example, one of the things to solve is you put the counter in, you click the counter, and it goes up. If you put that in as a service and make it a singleton, you can open up another blazer, because it's using signal R, another window, and hit the counter, make it up to three, open up another window, and it'll be set at three, because it's a singleton. That may have some applications, you know. <laughs> it's, between people if you want to do communication chat because signal large what it's doing it's already down to doing that so there's some kind of tricks and stuff you can play that makes it pretty nice in doing that uh, other than um, you know the imports you've got more imports but all the other stuff here's our counter again same counter page all right so just wanted to show that and other than that, and the root, the CSS, bootstrap, open iconic, same kind of thing that uh, ASP.NET you would be used to. So let's move on. How much time we got? Oh, we're doing good. All right, authentication. Let's see. There we go, sir. I'm going to show a little bit of authentication. Yes, this uses OAuth authentication, ASP.NET again. This is a way, a little example, what we're doing here is just getting the user identity, seeing that he's authenticated, stating it, and sending that to the console whether or not he's authenticated. So this is just a simple kind of giving an idea that, yeah, I'm doing a provider. I'm injecting the uh, provider here. And then I've got a button. You notice that this is an on-click. There's your... Um, on click is the username, so uh, that's the value. Uh, so just saying, right, if it's authenticated, if it's not, you're using the identity from there from the user. So it's, you know, kind of if he done that again. All right. Validation. Here's the validation of classes. Again, required error message, string length, error message, name's too long, missing name, that you, everybody who said SP.net is used to. I mean, this is what you did. Now, the question is, and this is a good question, in ASP.NET, if you use the uh, JavaScript, the unobtrusive JavaScript uh, load, it would run both client and server side. This one code would validate on both ends, so you had to only have your validation on one side. I haven't tried it, obviously, but I would like to, I would think that if you were putting out a piece of JavaScript on your client side, that you would, could be able to do both, and that would be sweet. So that's the kind of thing. And we're going to be using this guy, like, next. Forms. How many think forms are important? Forms are important. <laughs> but again, here we have some easy, easy forms. We have an, uh, is this working? The data annotation validator, and this validation summary stuff. This was a it, data annotation validator sets up the uh, bar at the top that says whether or not you succeeded or you've got an issue and lists all your errors. Just like ASP.NET, again. Um, on submit, handle valid submit, which is handle valid submit down here in code. So that's your validation summary. Your button type, a submit, again, input ID. Here's the thing, at bind value equals example dot model dot name. So that's coming from my model above, had a name on it, so that's example model, and it's saying that put in that text. Now what we're gonna cover is, and this is the end of the edit form, and this is what happens, you know, console white light on valid submit, you know. Just writing out that it's submitted valid. 
but you have different types of input on this. So we're going to cover those. Here's a, this is the input text right there. So you're saying input text. But one thing you do is you have a different type of input. And we'll cover this. Because those forms are important. The input text goes to the input text area. Input select, we're going to go deep dive a little bit on this one. Input a number, input a checkbox, input a date. So you just said as a tag, input date, uh, from what you want in the code. So that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty nice. This is a select example. Select is a drop down, where you drop down and you can select different options. So we have a classification here. Your input selects, see if we use this as a tag name, and then we just drop down our options. That drop down options could be a for each loop, obviously, to a different to a list variable. It could be its own um, component. You could have its own dynamic component that generates those options dynamically. So again, this is straight HTML uh, stuff. Again, we're providing here a bind value to the structure, or a binding to the value. And of course, binding is an important thing. And we'll be getting to that. But we're going to unit test. In unit testing, this is important. Unit testing, we normally test the backend code, correct? We do the, the, the uh, methods, we unit test the methods, we get it our results back. Hopefully we test positive and negative on our unit test. But here, if you look at this, what am I doing here? Look at that. Does find take the does find operate in the same way as query selector? It's using CSS to find to find the inner text and asserting that. This is the Selenium side. This actually replaces or Selenium and you unit testing the UI. And you also can unit test the methods, obviously. So that's a big one. To be able to unit test back here, set the component, adding the component. Here we're doing find a button and click it. Oh, again, unit testing. The, um, the UI. Mm -hmm. So actually, we, we, we validate the component that starts at zero, we hit the button, and then we validate it that it's got a one. It's basically all that's doing. So again, managing test, unit test, both sides. So very important. Angular. How many people here know Angular a little bit? Yeah, a few people know Angular, so we're a little comparison. Angular has 60,000 plus files when you download that sucker. <laughs> we got 35, 2.4 megabytes. So it's a little simpler. But what I wanted to cover was the, the bindings and a little syntax comparisons between the two. One way binding, uh, <coughs> Angular and the Blazor. Conditional, the star NGF. Again, in Blazor, it's just a regular if statement, but with an at sign in front of it. Conditional display, if you want hidden, if you put it in braces. Here you just have to say hidden equals and the value that you want. That you're testing against. Style, style, background, and then again background, but then you put the variable. You say color and then the, the variable there. Encouraging line style. Huh? Don't encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> a collection, as we saw, the for each, just a regular for each, instead of doing a star G4, just regular for each, as we saw. Two way, the banana in a box, and this one is just buying and the, and the name of the variable. It's What's the blink tag? Huh? The blink tag. Can you remember that? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Summary. Yeah, hey. Here's the summary. Yay! All right, first language for Microsoft to use WebAssembly. 
I believe there are some other ones out there, but you know. Uh, uses ASP.NET core concepts, which you know is going to help a lot of people. Writing and debugging in C sharp. Writing client or servers or client with an API, which I think most people will probably end up doing is writing with the client in the API. Uh, full unit testing with of the methods and the UI. Uh, validation attributes on the client and server, both can validate client and server, both, and hopefully. <laughs> now, here's the other thing. No implicit equality statements as in JavaScript with double equal signs. And I think everybody knows what I mean in JavaScript on the double equal signs. You have double equal signs, triple equal signs, double equal signs can equal 50 different things. Um, no difference between browsers. That's a big one. You know, there is no difference in WebAssembly between the browsers, so what works, works. And, then, <coughs> and, then, and hopefully you've seen some things that why Blazor is hot, and you know, the debugging, the C-sharp, and the server client, both sides. Um, why it's getting the uh, push that it's really getting right now. And you know, I think you'll see more and more of that. All right, and the last slide, questions. That was a lot. That was a lot to cover. I still made it in time. We've got time for questions. Whoa. You kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Did I cover too much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> John, I think that means you're just too good. You're just too hot. Blazing, in fact. It's blazing hot. It is. It is blazing hot. I have some questions, but I'm waiting for my web assembly. <laughs> All right. I have a okay. question. Is it possible to write a Docker container for this environment with, with Visual Studio and whatever you have so others can start easily with it? I, you have to come again. Mike? I mean, said, is it possible to have a Docker container with the Visual Studio and whatever dependencies you have, so if others want to experiment with it, Oh sure. Oh sure. You can, yeah, they they, they have um, yeah they put uh, Visual Studio in Docker, so you could Dockerize the, the Visual Studio, put it in, or whatever. But Blazor, I mean Blazor is ASP.NET, so basically it'll run. You can Dockerize it, containerize it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm not the Windows guy. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But this thing this thing is uh, open source, so it'll run on Linux and everything else. All right. So it is open source. So yeah, you run this, dockerize it, put it on, do whatever you want. So I was just kind of curious. I've seen some cool applications with WebAssembly with like C++ stuff. Do you ever see taking something like this and replacing some of our current client apps that we use and moving it to like a web-based uh, laser app? Uh, that's up to Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm passing the buck on that one. <laughs> but that's a good question. Any more questions? All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.